G'day guys. Um, I was I just came back from, from at at the beach area and I sort of watched a video Michael Eads put up just recently. Um, that's from on the low carb down under site, and I checked it out and it's a new sort of construct that he's come up with called Mass In Mass Out. I was thinking of it. It just sounds so much like C I C O, calories in, calories out. Now, he obviously, he does, he's, not, he's trying to show that that is nonsense and trying to demonstrate that uh, if you measure um, carbon dioxide, um, you'll get a certain mass, um, and that mass can go anywhere and stuff like that. But you know, I I just had this funny feeling. It's just I don't just don't buy it that it's that simple. I still believe that hormones are playing a big role. Um, in the system, it's not just mere mass in, mass out. Um, I think, like a lot of people, like the CICO, the calories in, calories out, people get, how do I want to put it? Um, it's, it's an attractive construct. It just sounds really good. You know, it's a theoretical model this, this Puerto Rican academic came up with. And you know, and while there may be some validity to some of the those, you know, that you can measure carbon dioxide and work out the sort of weight of it and stuff like that, and there may be a relationship with um, with the actual mass of the food that you that you just consume to some extent, approximate. But I think it, you know, unless you actually do proper experiments, you don't really know because all he's come up with is a value from the amount of differences between carbs and fat in terms of the the amount, the you know, and looked at those and actually from that extrapolated this theoretical model that he's come up with. This It's a hypothesis that he has. And I sort of don't really buy it in that regard. I sort of uh, um, sent an email to Bart K. I'm, I'm asking him to look at it because he probably hasn't seen it. This is the first time I've come a, become aware of this um, construct. And I've just said to him, you know, uh, you need to see this video from Michael Eads. I was doing, and it's approaching things from a mass in, mass out viewpoint based on some theoretical work by a Puerto Rican academic and extrapolation from Michael. I still think it has some holes in it. Um, CO2 exhalation does in, increase on a low carb, something the moronic Ray Petian fan club thinks is a negative, but hormones are still at play and so is uncoupling of mitochondria, that is, but just I'm adding that, I just used the mitochondria uncoupling i didn't use the word mitochondria um he understands what i mean um that uh, and i'm just using that for your um understanding that um we see in low fat vegan and low carb keto plus in those two non-randal cycle activated states um not only are we radiating mitochondrial um energy away with uncoupling but also ampk increases glucose and or fatty acid oxidation decreases protein and lipid synthesis even even if some co2 that is carbon mass goes out what happens to food energy is still going to be hormonally driven in my opinion where this mass in mass out may have some approximate or lazy man's I've called it um, not very confident on that value to a degree is in fasting therapeutic ketosis or very low fat where only uncoupling needs to be accounted for because the hormonal signaling is at a sort of basal level response when it comes to mass fat storage um well, you don't see that happening because you're, you're sort of just, uh, yeah, yeah, you're rapidly losing, um, you know, 
pounds, so to speak, of, of your own weight under those states. Uh, it just, and I said, it just sounds like a new CICO hypothesis, um, MIMO construct, ignoring the Randall cycle hormo hormonal signaling, including hormonal, hormonally driven uncoupling. But I'd love to hear your take on it. And, you know, I mean, I'd love to, I think we all would love to hear his take on it, um, what he thinks about it. So I've put him under the pump, so to speak, by doing this video um, for my subscribers. I'm just going to... Share my screen. So this is the video. I'll, I'll put all the links so you guys have them. What are you doing? So this is the actual video. Dr. Michael, Michael Eads, um, weight loss, calories, and insulin. So that's so he's saying the weight loss, and then he's talking about the CICO construct, calories, and the insulin, the hormonal um, construct. And, and he goes, or a third alternative, which is this mass in, mass out. You can measure the carbon dioxide um, stuff and all that. So that's his but you know, just a cursory look seems to sort of create a bit of a few holes. In this study, um, altered resting and exercise respiration, um, despite their greater carbon dioxide production, okay. So via VCO2, the majority of obese subjects maintained a normal plasma pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood. Obviously you have to do that because of pH has to be tightly regulated. And so as a consequence, that can't be altered. Otherwise you put the person at risk. In order to maintain normal pH levels in the face of higher VCO2, so production of carbon dioxide, Obese subjects generally demonstrate a higher minute ventilation. So they're ventilating at a higher rate. You know, so they're getting rid of more um, carbon dioxide. So if it was mass in, mass out, he used the example of a type 1 diabetic that actually has this ventilating effect and actually loses more um, CO2, so more mass going out. And I'm going, well, so do obese people. The complete opposite. So just on that, there's an inverse relationship right there. There's a problem with that hypothesis. Now, there may be some value in it that I haven't seen. Now, obviously, I haven't researched it. This is the first, um, you know, the first video I've come across. I didn't even know about this theoretical model that was created by this Puerto Rican academic. So I wasn't even aware of the mass in, mass out hypothesis or construct or whatever. You know, so, you know, and when it, when it comes to, you know, the downstream effects of any construct, you really have to go back and look at the literature and, and see, are there, what is the situation? in different states. What about Randall cycle activated states? This is the biggest problem in the CICO community and the low carb community. One is so fixated on hormones and the other is so fixated on calories. And they both are ignoring the Randall cycle and the Randall cycle gradient that can vary. You know, So they both have this inability to construct anything around it. And so they're all arguing from their different, you know, one one is saying because they, they're looking at it from a low fat perspective and saying, well, you know, um, the only reason, um, you know, you guys um, consume less when you go on a low carb diet, even, you know, and the, you know, the plant munchers do the same thing. You know, from satiety, from from pretty much 
one from protein and the other one from uh, you know fiber so that's the the argument that they that both sides put forward obviously even that argument sort of falls flat on its face because walter kempney his research that he did back in the 1930s and i've done a video on that um, it's in the playlist of pim johnson that i've done with pim collaboration so there's a playlist on mine that's a very it's a very old video that i did but it covers that about the the food guidelines and the whole history where things originated and about this researcher from germany back in the 1930s and he's you know pre-randall stuff and i discuss a bit about that so i go into some of that so i just don't buy it <laughs> you know there may be some value in it don't get me wrong i may be missing something you know, there may be some value where you part of the theory may be valuable in in making certain measurements and predictions, you know, you know, but I still think that it's you you're only replacing another poor construct like CICO, and you're not taking into consideration a whole lot of hormonal state, Randall cycle activation, all these other physiological processes that are happening. You know, and different substrates of, you know, I've never seen any research. I've tried to find research which actually looks at the enzymes that are constructed. What's the, what is out of the nutrients that we take, what are, beyond the protein, what other elements are we actually using in their construction, both carbons and hydrogen atoms, you know, all these other components? I've never been able to find something satisfactory to really be able to construct a model myself, a hormonal, um, you know, and, you know, the different, you know, what I call um, the food energy mass and the hormonal interplay. You know, I think that's really where we have to look at and, and the nuancing, but we need to first develop systems of measurement and then we can start talking about you know, certain new constructs. But I think unless you take into consideration the hormonal system the that is actually interplaying the Randall cycle, um, the actual, the rate limiting effect of hormones, sorry, of enzymes in the body, you know, because the Krebs cycle can only do so many steps. If you're trying to flood through um, uh, two pathways, you know, they, you're going to get, depending on the substrate levels within the blood, you're going to get different gradient, Randall cycle gradient that will emerge. Um, but fundamentally, there's there's there are problems with a lot of these constructs that are that are starting to appear, and I'm just worried that there's going to be another you know bandwagon of gurus that are going to jump on this M I M O sort of construct. And we're not going to get anywhere in in, in sort of progressing um, the cause of uh, nutritional science and uh, um, providing information that is sound for people out there that are trying to make sense of these sort of things. So yeah, that's that's my sort of take at the moment. I'm you know this is just my gut sort of response. So this is a gut response. Some of these elements I may change my views and opinions on in the future. I don't think by a very large margin, it'll be minor tinkering here or there of what I've said. So don't hold me to it is what I'm trying to say. I'm still waiting and I'll be, I'm going to be very interested to see what Bart has to say as well on this subject, you know, his take on it. I don't think it's going to... Um, be very divergent from mine, but he may pick up or notice things that I haven't noticed. He may be aware of some of this research that I wasn't aware of, and he may have discounted it and has his reasons. So I'd love to hear him, his take on it. Um, in that regard, he's a you know brilliant research scientist. Um, I've got a lot of respect for him, and I think he's the sort of person who at least can. Can, t can point out the, the bullshit a bit more in greater detail than I can. You know, I'm a citizen sort of uh, reviewer of the literature. 
and I come up with my own sort of, uh, um, I see the relationships of things, the processes and stuff like that. And uh, dabbing into biochemistry and physiology, I've been able to have a deep understanding. But the motivation was survival. When you've got cardiovascular disease, it's a great motivator. And if you, you've got a bit of a high IQ like I do have, um, I think you guys are aware of that anyway. Um, I can plow through shitloads of data and information to get to try and understand how things work. Um, I don't know whether this gut reaction of mine um, is on the right path. Mostly my gut reactions are, you know, I don't like bullshit. You know, I don't like, you know, I'm very much um, clinical, you know, things, if they don't sound plausible, mostly probably not. If you can just find with a Google search, like I just, just did there, um, something that shows an inverse relationship in terms of um, CO2, breathing out at CO2 um, levels, you know, it really starts putting a big question mark on the whole hypothesis that uh, uh, that Michael's um, putting forward. So I'll leave it at that um, uh, and we'll see what Bart comes up with. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. See yous.